Hey, what's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this weekend, Saturday, August 5th, 2023, about 11.26 a.m. California time. Latest quake uh, looks like some movement into the South America region, also a 1.8 uh, up in Alaska. So we did have some larger scale movement overnight uh, with a 6.2 earthquake coming in super deep here to the Peru Chile Trench, uh, that activity well underneath the Argentina region. We have been seeing a pretty good swarm of activity here across the, the entire Peru Chile Trench region. Uh, but now with this uh, deeper scale activity, we'll definitely watch surface regions up towards the locked area where the strain tends to build up uh, mostly along the Peru Chile Trench here. It uh, looks like we're already seeing a little bit of activity following last night's movement there with a 5.1, 100 kilometers deep here, a little bit further up along the Peru Chile Trench, about 100 kilometers deep. We'll continue to watch this area uh, for some uh, potential further large scale movement. Either way, that's a uh, that's definitely a deep one. Looking at the earthquake 3D globe here, showing some uh, smaller quakes within the vicinity of these uh, two earthquakes here on the map that the USGS is reporting. All right, further up into the states, a little spotty activity throughout the uh, western Texas area. One earthquake way over here around the North Charleston area of South Carolina, 1.7. That earthquake coming in just within the last hour and a half or so. Out there in the major seismically hazard zone there in South Carolina. A lot of folks don't think that there earthquake uh, that there's earthquake hazards out there, but I guarantee you there is. There's been some large damaging earthquakes throughout history here around the uh, Charleston uh, South Carolina area. This is the USGS hazard map showing um, major hazards here across the uh, states, at least known hazards in the terms of fault systems and plate boundaries. California, obviously, that's, uh, that's a no-brainer, right? Right along the uh, Pacific and the North American plate boundary out here. These intraplate faults do definitely uh, create some earthquakes, but it takes a little bit uh, longer time, a little bit more time accumulation there to build up uh, enough earthquake activity to create a big one but for now a little earthquake right smack dab right in the middle of that uh, seismically hazardous area there in south carolina all right let's look at the rest of the uh, country here again a little bit of movement across texas nothing major going on here for yellowstone did see a 1.9 yesterday let's double check that and see what we have for the latest information here this is the overview of Yellowstone National Park. Looks like we had a little bit more earthquake activity than one last night. Uh, that's gonna be, well, maybe one, two, three, a couple on there. Nothing big going on there. There's no major swarm, no major movement of um, activity, at least far as I can see here on the USGS, or the, uh, the seismograph stations here from this site. It's called isthisthingon.org. Gives out a pretty cool layer, uh, overview of the uh, seismograph stations there at Yellowstone. Pacific Northwest has gone quiet. Uh, that's normally a sign that it's the weekend and a lot of times the computer systems there, as far as pu putting out the earthquake activity, um, gets bumped up a little bit in terms of the magnitude. Um, so more than likely we won't see anything pop up here unless it's above a certain threshold that the USGS normally sets there on the weekend. Uh, there in Northern California, a little spotty activity from yesterday and a couple from today as well. Looks like a 2.8 just outside of Bernie, a couple miles here south of Bernie, 11 kilometers deep north of Mount Lassen. Nothing spe uh, specific going on here across that volcano in Northern California. Just a little bit of activity underneath the Sierra Nevada mountains there. Rest of California. Well, as you can see, a little spotty up and down the region. Let's go ahead and check out the 2.5 map and above. Looks like we only seen one earthquake, uh, aside from the Bernie, uh, Bernie earthquake up north, a 2.6 down here outside of Ridgecrest, California, just off of the uh, Little Lake Fault Zone. Aside from that, most of the movement here, all microquake activity uh, there into the California region. Into Alaska, a little spotty activity up there as well. Looks like things may be attempting to calm down across the Aleutian Trench. It's been pretty active here uh, over the last seven days or so with some moderate quake activity 
across the region. Uh, over here across the Kurokamachaka, both of these earthquakes, uh, one in Japan and one in the Kuro Islands area from yesterday. A look at the EMSC model globe here shows just that older movement across the Western Pacific. Getting a pretty good cluster of quakes once again here in the Indonesia Islands area and up along the Java Trench. Also look at, uh, goodness, look at Eastern Afghanistan. That's a swarm of earthquake activity. Let's see what we got going on over here. It's a pretty good amount. Uh, I'm sure there's a little bit more than what's shown here on the map. But this is what the USGS is reporting and these magnitudes are getting bigger. 5.8, the latest quake there about nine o'clock this morning, local time here, my time. Uh, 207 kilometers deep for that earthquake. Looks like things may be building up out here for um, maybe a larger quake. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and check out the, uh, I wanna check out the earthquake catalog here and see what we have specifically for larger scale activity there around Eastern Afghanistan historically. So stand by for a second. I'm just gonna pull up the earthquake catalog book here and do a record search <clears throat> excuse me eastern afghanistan right around the mountains they normally get quite a bit of deeper scale uh, activity there when, when, when it was i think last year they had a seven pointer out here let's just double check and see what we have for the uh the data so last uh 6.5 that's what i have pulled up here 6.5 and above is back in march of this year Looks like they had a 6.9 uh, up north towards the Tajikistan, Tajikistan area earlier back in February. Uh, prior to that, a couple earthquakes back in 2015. Uh, largest scale, largest activity here. Looks like that was a 7.8 back in 1921 within this cluster area. That's where we're seeing uh, the movement take place today. 7.5, same area. Uh, back in 2015. Uh, so this area can definitely see some large movement. Uh, his, history obviously shows us that. So continue to watch this area potentially for some further movement there across the areas of eastern Afghanistan. Uh, bring that up. That was kind of weird. That's going to be this area right over here just off the plate boundary. There is a lot going on over here as far as... Um, that was just ghost in the computer again uh, definitely a lot going on as far as the plate dynamics here across the region continue to watch that maybe for some larger scale activity uh, further west across Turkey and areas around the Mediterranean well looks like some smaller quake activity there today 5.8 out here in the Atlantic Ocean it's been a while since we've seen any um, moderate sized earthquake activity there in the Atlantic. USGS downgrading that to a 5.3, quite the downgrade there. South of Iceland along a divergent boundary known as the Charlie Gibbs Fracture Zone. This area has seen a lot of earthquake activity last year. Pretty good swarm of movement. I mean, there was a lot. And um, I can't remember how many there was, but there was oh, a couple hundred or so in this area. I believe it was about this time last year. But uh, 5.3 coming in there now. It has been awfully quiet in terms of earthquake movement out here over the past couple months. We'll continue to watch that though. Uh, these divergent boundaries and fracture zones for some further movement. Hawaii, got anything major going on out there? Doesn't look like it. Although we did see a three pointer there last night. 3.6 to be exact from the USGS just south of Pahala. This is somewhat of a fairly shallow earthquake. Normally it's deeper movement quakes here across the Pahala area. Um, but that one coming in about 12 kilometers deep. Did see some previous movement or uh, following movement as well. 1.9 near the uh, volcano Hawaii area. That's going to be the Kilauea volcano right in the crater. 0.6. No major changes going on there across the volcanoes there in Hawaii. Uh, the latest informational statement there. From a couple up uh, from a uh, couple days ago, they're doing weekly updates because of the declining activity there at Kilauea Volcano. But of course, continue to watch that and monitor that for any uh, increased seismic activity and movement. 
Uh, but I think for now, with this deeper scale activity triggering down here across the Perugia Trench, that's going to be a hot spot to watch uh, for some larger movement, I believe. All right, space weather activity did stir up a G3 class storm last night. Looks like we've got some proton events going on as well. Uh, here's the KP index from last night. Notice we reached up close to the G7 or a KP index of seven. The G7 would be, oh, goodness, I think we'd be seeing that uh, outside. But a KP index of seven, a G3 class storm. Notice on this uh, map here, it just reach right around the seven uh, threshold. That looks like um, it did stir up quite a bit of auroras into the higher areas around Alaska, Canada, uh, Greenland, and Iceland area. Not for sure who all saw, saw it last night, but uh, if you did get a chance to see it, I'm sure it was pretty spectacular. Looks like we're calming back down, though, back into the uh, low range. There's the current aurora forecast. Things have definitely tapered off since last night. Uh, nothing major forecasted here. We're seeing a little bit of the aurora stirring up, or the uh, proton events stirring up here at the higher latitudes. That's going to be on the... Uh, looks like the northern polar regions here. Southern area getting in on a little bit, uh, but we're way up there on the frequencies being affected as far as the global or the uh, D region absorption prediction map here. Again, that's at the higher levels of the northern hemisphere. Looks like uh, high frequency communications and low frequency navigate navigation systems could be affected from that incoming proton event was only a 10% chance, but as uh, as we can see, it bumped up a little bit here as we're uh, watching that come into the uh, ionosphere. Sea flare activity looks like 99% chance, uh, M flare around 55, X flare around 10% chance. We did see a little bit of, well, looks like maybe uh, some M flare activity overnight, long duration M flare. Uh, that looks like that may have, uh, let's see where it came from. Looks like there was a filament eruption here from 3386. That's going to be the northern one here on the western limb of the sun. Potentially could see some elevated CME or uh, aurora conditions here coming up on the 8th. Here in a couple days, we'll continue to watch that. Even though that uh, sunspot and the filament eruption itself was uh, directed away from the Earth, but it looks like it did produce a uh, pretty nice full halo CME which we could uh, get a glancing blow from again around on the August 8th time period uh, it could have something to do with the uh, proton events that we're currently observing let's go back here did not mean to exit out of there wanted to check out all these sunspots there's numerous sunspots out here 3386 the source of that filament eruption earlier today still continues to grow and look very complex over here across the western limb of the sun also, surprise, surprise, the newer re or the uh, this other region behind 3386 is getting some growth in it as well. Notice these sunspots like to stay relatively stable as they're facing the Earth, but as soon as they get out of view, uh, well, then, uh, or at least, you know, away directed away from Earth, then they start uh, gaining some steam. So watch these two regions here. These newer sunspots that were coming around the bend, the eastern limb, Got a better view of them today. They are not looking uh, very promising in terms of complexity or any major solar flare threat. But uh, that's a bummer. Continue. We'll continue to watch those though as uh, they progress here across the Earth-directed view of the sun. No major coronal holes. Looks like 32 down here on the southern uh, hemisphere of the sun. Probably shouldn't. Uh, won't have any effect here on Earth. It's too far positioned south to have any uh, effect from that uh, coronal hole. But we'll wait here, maybe see what happens on the August 8th time period uh, for that potential incoming CME from that filament eruption earlier this morning. Late last night, early this morning. Depends on how you look at it. All right, uh, Storm Prediction Center out here. Looks like uh, enhanced risk for some severe weather. This is the Storm Prediction Center map for 
Tornado wind and hail events. Uh, looks like there is an increased threat of a tornado activity out here in these regions in the uh, browner color and the green outline there, mostly around Indiana, South Dakota as well, <clears throat> Iowa potentially. Uh, so if you're out there today, enjoying the weekend with the family or whatever, make sure you keep your weather 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 radio on and uh, keep listening to it just in case there comes a, uh, a tornado warning out here in these areas. 5% chance, not a big deal, but still, uh, with 5%, even a 2%, we can get some tornadoes stirred up out there. So it's just best to be prepared. Main threat today looks like some large damaging wind in the dashed area. That includes areas around Broken, o uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, Enid, Stillwater, uh, including maybe parts of uh, Amarillo as well. In the dashed area, uh, you have a 10% or greater probability of seeing winds in excess of 65 knots. Uh, or greater, like I said, within 25 miles of a point. Also some large damaging hail in the dashed area. That's a pretty large 30% zone there on eastern in eastern Colorado. Uh, Colorado Springs, Aurora, Lakewood. Looks like those areas got to be uh, prepared today for some large damaging hail. 10% or greater probability of 2-inch diameter hail or larger within 25 miles of a point within this dashed area. So heads up. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have a good night or a good day. Goodness. <laughs> There's some more activity stirring up here. Look at this. 4.8 within the last. It takes USGS a little time to push, put these earthquakes on the map, unfortunately. Uh, but they are eventually being uh, popped up here. So we're seeing the effects of that deeper movement quake at the surface levels. Again, we'll continue to watch this area maybe for some further large-scale movement. The latest though, right along the uh, Prucelli Trench here, 68 kilometers deep, 4.8. Just be on guard, keep an eye on this area. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Uh, it's gonna be hot out here today, 105 in California, Northern California. <clears throat> so I'm probably gonna stay inside most of the day, maybe the pool, I don't know. Have a good one and enjoy your weekend. We'll see you guys back here later tonight.